I wanted to shout out some intriguing and interesting um, designs that I found on Thingiverse for Meshtastic. I have been doing some of these uh, hidden nodes that I mentioned before, where there is a 3D printed top that some of you generously said looked like a vacuum attachment. It, yes, it does. Um, now, this actually cuts a component out. And at the expense of looking kind of honestly like a pipe bomb, uh, which is concerning, uh, it eliminates the need for a non-standard top unless you use a standard, I think this is like a one inch pipe, something like that, uh, PVC pipe in order to conceal both a meshtastic node and also an antenna. The entire thing is integrated. It seems really clean, honestly. And when it comes to creating these sorts of uh, sneaky nodes, I think this is one of the fav my favorite designs that I've seen. Um, so this is, sorry, uh, to, to non-answer your question, but this is what I've been working on instead, is understanding what uh, some of the most efficient ways of creating a hidden mesh-tastic node would be uh, and how you can do it for less and less and less money. Um, this is my current iteration, which is uh, stuffing one inside of a PVC pipe uh, and 3D printing an enclosure that kind of holds it all into place. So uh, the print is fairly simple. It is just kind of this rack. It's almost like a little like server rack for the mesh plastic device. Um, I am trying some of these out actively and I have to say they are pretty impressive. So now that I've got my own little mesh, ne mesh network across my local area, um, I will have some more reports back on what types of uh, mesh infrastructure and mesh setups are useful. Now, we talked about the security implications of this a while ago, and there have been some updates to this. So of course, my demo on this is now destroyed, thanks to the computer completely restarting. But I'll go over it kind of on a high level. Uh, Meshastic devices like this, uh, potentially anyway, like this badge we created for DEF CON, uh, are very versatile. They can be managed directly, they can be man over serial, they can be managed over Bluetooth, they can be managed over Wi-Fi. There's lots of different ways they can be managed, but they can also be managed over the LoRa radio. So you can actually set them up to accept commands and execute them remotely. So if you've got a node in a place that's really hard to get to, it's worth it to set these up. And I was going to show exactly how to do that. But basically, the process is you create a secret channel that has a special key that you and other people on that channel know. All communication will be encrypted. And while other radios will be able to forward these packets, they won't be able to read them. Now, that's important because currently in Meshtastic, if you are sending direct messages while uh, connected to like the main default channel, then those messages are readable by any node that they pass through. So this upgrade in security is designed to prevent eavesdropping and make it so that if you're sending commands to a node, they're not able to be replayed or read. So um, let's say that we have this node that we want to control remotely. We set it up with a channel called admin, and then we also set up a key. So let's say that I want to be able to control this node from my own personal node, and I can generate a public and private key, put that key into the node that I want to uh, administer remotely. And then even if someone were to get access to my admin channel, they wouldn't be authorized to uh, administer this node remotely. So once I create a channel that is a admin channel, and then I add myself as the authorized uh, admin, then I can control these nodes wherever they are. And I can send them any uh, command that I would be able to send a node that's connected via serial. So that's really cool. I can learn about neighbors. I can enable modules. And one of the modules I'm particularly excited about trying out is the PACT counter. So that uses the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth radio to try to measure how many people are around. So it'll do a reading and try to figure out whether or not um, you know, a certain amount of people are nearby by their cellular devices. Like uh, maybe they have headphones, maybe they have uh, like a laptop or something that allows me to do a count of roughly how many people are around. Um, this is telemetry information you can include so you can measure whether space is occupied or not in a number of ways. One of them is with like a motion sensor or a presence detection sensor, but uh, the other way is actually with a PAX counter that's looking for an increase in uh, devices. Now, what's cool is you can also set like a floor limit. So if you do a scan of an area and determine that there's usually like four devices, then you can set it so that it only goes off or it only sends an alert um, when there are more than the normal number of devices nearby. So I think that's pretty cool. Um, <clears throat> like in terms of creating an invisible like security camera or like presence detector, the ability to use one of these nodes to like alert you from miles away uh, that there's somebody you know nearby uh, just by their smartphone. Like most people are gonna are not gonna think to disable that, or 
they're going to turn off their Wi-Fi and think that it's actually off and not know about the assisted GPS thing that's always turning it on and using it to find your location. So uh, pretty cool, pretty effective, and I'm looking forward to how my remote nodes are able to measure human activity throughout the city. Now, this is also one of the reasons why cities like to provide you know, those like uh, free Wi-Fi services, like some of that is honestly the fact that it gives them a lot of information about how many people pass by certain areas in a day. So by tracking these uh, devices, you can learn a lot about people. And I'm excited to see some of the potentials for these LoRa mesh networks to potentially like report back information about specific nodes, uh, to basically like listen for specific devices. Uh, I think that there's like an interesting surveillance aspect to this. Um, where these mesh nets can actually look for, you know, uh, tire pressure monitor sensors or things like that that could track a vehicle or a person across the city and report back on where they are.